Hello everybody, Spooky Sane Woman here. Thank you for checking out episode God Knows of Seduce Me The Otome. Last time, normal starting up things. Nothing romantic has happened yet. Boys are staying. Yeah. I was happy that they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they all needed help and my want to help people was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! Finally, I'm starving. Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with the food on the table. I noticed James's eye twitching in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. Actually, I didn't know that in the extras of the game that they have bloopers of the voice actors doing this. And James's voice actor, when he goes to say this, he miss says backyard. And he goes in this whole spiel about how he's like doing a, an advertisement for a barbecue restaurant. I thought it was pretty funny. I laughed harder than I probably should have, but... <laughs> I almost couldn't hold it in. So I didn't! <laughs> I couldn't hold in my laughter anymore. As I laughed, Matthew and Sam looked my way, faces stuffed. Is something funny? What are you laughing at? I stopped to catch my breath. I leaned over the table and took in a few breaths before replying. You both are so funny. Both of their pace, paces, both of their faces turned a slight pink before they looked away from me, and they swallowed the food in their mouths. Sh shut up! We're not funny. We're hungry. Well, we're, we're glad that we made you laugh. Shut up, Matthew. What? I'm just saying. <laughs> See, James, it's entertainment for her. They were funny to me. At least they enjoyed the food. As I watched, I took a couple of pieces of food for myself and placed them on the plate before eating as well. Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange eating with just guys, but they were enjoyable to be around. Maybe they made me, f they made me feel like a part of their family as we ate together. However, our peace was soon disturbed. Aliens came down and attacked us all! No, but that'd be weird. Huh? It's my mom. Excuse me. Hello? Hey, honey, how are you? I'm sorry I didn't get to see you off. Hi, Mom. Everything's fine. I'm actually eating dinner right now. Oh, good, good. So there was food there. Well, your father wanted me to call and talk to you about having a house party tomorrow night. To celebrate the new house and all. A house party? Tomorrow night? <laughs> so soon? Your father insists. He, you know how he is with events. He knew exactly what she meant. He didn't like long, relaxing periods between important events. It was slightly messed up. I was expected to act on the drop of a dime, from moving immediately the day after a funeral to my grandfather's house to now organizing a party. I know, well, since I don't exactly have you two here to help me arrange it, I'm gonna need some time to prepare things. Oh, that's fine. I mean, Susan and Naomi can help. I have work, and you know how your father is. I know. I have to do it myself. He won't help. I'm sure it'll be amazing, honey. I have faith in you. Thanks, Mom. Alright, I gotta go. I love you, too. I love you, too, Mom. Great. Now how am I gonna do this? Is something wrong? Huh? How did you- Oh. Right. Mind reading. <laughs> but yeah, I gotta do it soon or my parents will be really disappointed. I'll have to stay up and organize everything tonight. Hey, why don't we help you? That's what we're here for, right? I don't see why not. I can name a few reasons why we shouldn't. Sam? Back off! Uh, we'll take care of everything, miss. Just leave everything to us. That was surprising. I didn't think the boys would offer help right off the bat. I couldn't help but smile. I was actually rather thankful now that I let them stay. 
Now I didn't have to do everything alone. As I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but yawn. Feeling a little tired over there, princess? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day. At least tomorrow's the weekend so I can sleep in. Then it hit me. Wait! Where are all you going to sleep? We found some guest rooms on the opposite end of the house from the master bedroom. I'm sure those will do just fine. Oh. Got it. Alright then, I'm heading to my room to study and sleep. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night. I will. You too. With that, I left the dining room and went to my room. Eric, no. What? I wasn't going to do anything. Yes, he was. <laughs> Shh. They still never tell us what he was going to do. As soon as I got into my room, a wave of exhaustion hit me. Why am I so tired all of a sudden? I just woke up from that nap. Ugh, that was me at work yesterday. I was working 1 to 10, which... Actually, this episode is going, like, so farther along than it uploads, but... The day of recording this, the previous day, I worked 1 to 10. And at, like, 3 o'clock... I was like this close to passing out and I'm just like why am I so tired anyway I dragged myself to my bed and hauled up one of my bags I opened it and grabbed my economics book knowing that no matter how tired I was I had to study at least a page or two before sleeping at last the words on the page scrambled in my mind as I read through them but after two or three tries I managed to understand what the page was about equations Ugh. Finally, I decided to change into my pajamas and head to bed. Today had been a long day, and I needed the rest. Hopefully, tomorrow will be better. Three days of surprises in a row would kill me. With that thought in my mind, I drifted to sleep, embracing the darkness of slumber. <laughs> you fucking pretty boys think you're all that, huh? Well, save that to the end of my pistol! Huh? What's going on? I couldn't move my body. I felt like I was tied up and I couldn't see anything beyond the darkness that surrounded me. Yet I could hear the sounds of a heated argument coming at me from all directions. <laughs> One move and she gets it. Let her go. Matthew? Come on, chicken shit. Fight us like a real man. <laughs> like you scare me, Sam. Come on. Take one step, I dare you. Why can't I see? Stay away from her, Malix! And what are you gonna do, nerd boy? Suddenly I felt myself pulled to one side and arms wrapped around my body protectively. I've got you. Don't worry. Huh? Eric? As I was held in a tight embrace, I felt the world around me once again settle into a low, peaceful hum. The hostility of the dream before had fallen into black as the arms around me rocked me comfortingly. Slowly, though, my eyes fluttered open and I looked up to see the person out holding me. Damien! I stared into the eyes of Damien. His face was painted with worry and concern, and I knew he must have seen my dream. Why did I dream of Eric holding me, though? You can't control your dreams. Uh, well, I, I guess you're right. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. W what time is it? It's 9 a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I, uh, well... You can't control your mind reading? No. Not yet, at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. Is everything alright? Huh? Yeah, I'm alright. That's good. I'm assuming you had a nightmare. Yes. I'm sorry for disturbing you both. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides, we'd rather make sure you're okay before anything. Oh. Thank you. Now, why don't you come downstairs with us and have some breakfast? I'm sure some nice food will take your mind off of what you dreamt of. It was embarrassing to be the damsel in distress once again, but I felt rather happy that James and Damien were concerned for me, despite only knowing me for a short time. I'm sure if it was I wasn't sure if it was just courtesy or if they were genuinely concerned. I couldn't exactly read their minds. Alright. Let's get some breakfast. The two boys led me back to the dining room where the smell of bacon and eggs danced in the air. The smell wafted from the kitchen and made its way into the room, making my stomach growl in need. 
<sighs> breakfast smells good. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. I nodded before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. That feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instinctively, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as I closed my eyes, I felt a hand place itself on top of my head, breaking me out of my thoughts. Huh? Morning. You alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Sam, the owner of the hand on my head, raised an eyebrow at me before rustling my hair and moving away to sit down at the table. He then barked towards the kitchen where James was working. Hey! Is the food done yet? I'm starving! There's no need to yell, Sam! You're yelling too! Don't argue with me! From behind me, Eric appeared and sat beside me, rubbing his temples in obvious annoyance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. Castle? For some reason, when I heard the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. These guys had a castle? Sam looked at me and smirked at my reaction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. And wouldn't it be logical to not yell? <laughs> Whatever. Soon, James and Damien appeared, hands full of plates that carried bacon, eggs, toast, and waffles. They placed the plates down by each seat before seating themselves. Mm, my favorite. Finally. Thank you for the breakfast. It looks amazing. It's our pleasure. All of a sudden, my phone began to ring, ushering me to pull it from my pocket and answer. Hello? Hey, good morning. Guess who's at your door right now? Right on cue, there was a knock from the lobby door. My heart stopped. Suzu and Naomi were here. I'll get it. My heart quickly began to pound in my chest. Matthew was in the lobby and he'd get to the door first. I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed out of the dining room. As I passed through the archway between the dining and the lobby, I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brass door handle, causing the world to go into slow motion. Matthew, don't! But before my words could reach his ears, Matthew had opened the door and revealed the surprised faces of Naomi and Suzu. The world around me stopped as Suzu and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who merely stared back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. Uh, hi? I could not believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week was already bad enough. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Please, for God's sakes, someone do something other than stand there! Are you? S Suzu, let me explain. What's going on here? Who's at the door, Matthew? Oh. Soon the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. The situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. Ah, they're in your head. Suzu reached out and poked Matthew on the forehead, making him stare cross eyed at the finger. Uh, hello to you too? Seems real to me. They're not imaginary. Um. It was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder and feel the tension and felt the tension in my body almost fade away. I turned my head to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. I stared James at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell him who they were? Oh, everything seems surreal. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room along with Suzu and Naomi and sat across from their confused gazes. As Naomi and Suzu sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing! Thank you! Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meals. Make sure you dig in! I looked at Naomi and Suzu as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouth. Hopefully the food would ease their minds for whatever James wanted to reveal. 
As Naomi and Suzu ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more red at the face. So, Anderson, are you gonna tell us what's going on? Well, you see, uh... Gently, James placed a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Suzu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense. It's such a huge house. A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work. So she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, something like that. We're sorry if we made this situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Sam, not now. Well, I... I wanted to help out, but at the same time, I wanted to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. I'm gonna stay and help around the house, please. Are you sure? But I should also probably end this episode off here, but yes, Matthew, I am sure. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. Share with your friends if they like... Hi! I didn't know my cat was there. What was I gonna say? Crap. Bye bye!